Good morning. You are listening to First Title National Real Estate Radio Show. I am your host, Doug Dennis, St. Augustine, Florida, the nation's oldest city at WFOY 1240 AM Studios. Through the power of the Internet, this program is being streamed worldwide on 1240news.com. The show will also be archived on firsttitleservices.com and titlecompany.com. As First Title and Escrow Inc. are the sponsors of the program, they are a leading national title agency that covers approximately 40 states across the country. Additionally, the show will be posted on YouTube.com. Our radio show mission statement to provide an educational experience for listeners in a promotional format for real estate sales across the country. We are going to be talking about real estate, different real estate markets across the country. We've got a lot of topics today. Help us out. we got several real estate leaders calling in today. We've got them coming from South Carolina. We've got them coming from the Miami, Florida area. Um, so it should be exciting. Um, I hope everyone had a great, happy 4th of July and were with their families and friends and and celebrated safely, but uh, a, a nice day for all. And we're back again in beautiful St. Augustine, Florida. The, the the sun is shining. It's just such a beautiful day. Pleased to be uh, broadcasting from here. Uh, talking about the radio station, uh, WFOY 1240 AM has branched out. I know last week uh, they were working on the tower and this week the tower is up, it's it's higher, it's taller, and we are now broadcasting from an FM station besides uh, 1240 AM. We are broadcasting from 102.3 FM. That's 102.3 FM. Pretty exciting. Uh, this FM station reaches out more to the south towards Daytona Beach, and more to the north towards Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, so uh, uh, just expanding the reach of the first title National Real Estate Radio Show. And again, uh, we're broadcasting from St. Augustine, Florida, the nation's oldest city at WFOY, 1240 AM Studios. Uh, the two guests we're going to have is uh, Jim Gall. Jim Gall is the CEO of... Auction Company of America uh, down in Miami, although they work throughout the country. And we're also going to be finding out about REITs, R-E-I-T-S. And Brad Thomas plans to call in from Spartanburg, South Carolina. Uh, he is a guru in the REIT area, and uh, we're, we're looking forward to that. A um, couple things that... I found uh, on the websites, uh, and again, I, I like to go on to DS News a lot. Uh, DS News holds the five-star conference each year. That's coming up in September. Four to 5,000 people join uh, for networking and for training and to hear the, the newest and greatest from, uh, uh, from uh, Dallas, Texas. And one of the things that that came online 7 2013 a couple of days ago says national home from dsnews.com national home prices in May increased 12.2 from years ago. Uh, that's that's pretty big. Uh, hold on, we've got a caller. Good morning, you're on the air. Good morning, it's Jim Gall from South Florida. Well, Mr. Gall, it's uh, great to hear from you again. Uh, uh, it's been a while since uh, we ran into each other, but uh, you and I are old friends, and and from the YMCA in Miami to uh, Auction Company of America, where, where I worked with you for about four years. But tell us, uh, again, who you are, where you're from, what you do, and all about that good stuff. Well, Doug, again, great to hear your voice and uh, be on the air with you. I was originally born in New York, went to Pittsburgh, high school in Pittsburgh, and then I came down to 
the University of Miami. I graduated uh, back in the day when they called us Suntan U. Now we're in the top 50 in the country, so my degree is worth a lot more today than it was. Isn't that back funny? Then. Yes, yes, that's true. And then, um, you know, I started my own business doing business forms, office furniture, equipment, just kind of uh, doing advertising specialties. Uh, I ended up, I created the first scratch and sniff t-shirt. I, I learned marketing all over the world, and, and I just hadn't found my niche yet. And I really, I prayed about it. I said, you know, Lord, here I am. I graduated from the University of Miami with a degree in speech. I, I love antiques. I like fine art. I've been going to auctions. I've traveled the world. I've always been a salesman. I've always been a promoter. You know, what should I do? And, and it was very clear, auction school. So I went off to Missouri the, uh, in, the, in the Kansas City Stockyards in 1979, February. It was freezing, yeah. and uh, but in two weeks, I was officially declared a colonel which uh, doesn't mean a whole lot because then you have to go out and find deals. And we got some breaks early on with the SBA and some other governmental organizations, and, uh, and that's how the roots of Auction Company of America, based in Miami, Florida, auctioncompanyofamerica.com, was founded. And I've never looked back. Well, you've, uh, you, you have the number one license in Florida. That, uh, I remember because I was there, uh, when that all happened. And I'm not exactly sure what year that would be, uh, uh, 19, boy. Um, I think it was 86. Okay. That's when, that's when Florida first established, uh, auction laws for auction companies and for auctioneers. So, uh, was fortunate that we got the uh, license number one for the state of Florida, which we still hold, and then I have auctioneer's license number two for the state of Florida, because that's a different license. Yes, it is. So yes, it two different licenses. Before we get into auctions, of course, which uh, is, is a passion with me and, and of course, with you, uh, you got to tell my listening audience the uh, the great scratch and sniff uh, story that's... Uh, that, that's a that's a wonderful, exciting story. Well, I was sitting on an airplane back in the day, sometime in about the mid seventies, and I was just flipping through a magazine, and I saw a couple of ads. One was for a perfume, and you would just scratch it and sniff it, and you'd say, "Wow, that's uh, Chanel or that's whatever perfume it was." Right. And there was another one that would say, "Scratch and sniff the perfect martini." And you'd, and you'd scratch and sniff that, and you'd smell a martini. And I, I, I was fascinated by it. So the first thing I did, I, I, I called the publication, I think it was Newsweek or Time, and they sent me to an ad agency. And then the ad agency, uh, they sent me to the 3M company in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So I called them up, and I said, listen, I'm an, on, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm down here in, in South Florida. I, I love this scratch and sniff concept. And I'm, and I'm sure there's got to be more that can be done with it, but, you know, how do I get involved? And uh, they seemed to like my enthusiasm. They invited me up to Minneapolis, and uh, they met with me on a Saturday morning. Now, at the time, the 3M company, I think, had 120,000 employees all over the world. They had uh, probably 10 or 11 divisions. And the division that I was working with was the paper products they were developing things like uh, I guess what would be called NCR paper or, or uh, you know, papers like that where you could write on the top and without carbon paper it would come through. And they were, they were playing with this scratch and sniff, and they only had about 10 employees. So I had about six of them there that morning, and they were just saying, okay, well, look, we think we can do this with it. We think we can do that with it. And, and you know, we're all for, for working with... Um, not selling direct. We're we're looking for dealers. We're always looking for promoters. So uh, hey, we'll give you some samples and take them home and see what you can do with them. So at the time, I lived in Coral Gables, and I, I went to um, a golf station. And if you recall, way back in the day, they used to sell those little tin uh, bug killers, where you put your uh, your bug killer in a little tube, and then you would you would you would pump it, and it would come out. So I took, I took a, a bug sprayer, and I took the fragrance, and we mixed it with what was like an Elmer's 
was glue. It was called a binder. It was something that would that would hold the micro encapsulated fragrance, much like you see when you take pills today. Things are are encapsulated, and these were very tiny encapsulated uh, pieces. Mm-hmm. And we and we started spraying shirts with the fragrance, and it might have been pizza, or it might have been uh, strawberries, bananas, orange. They gave me different samples, and I put them in the oven. I baked them for about 10 minutes. The, the binder would adhere to the encapsulation. The water that was part of the encapsulation solution would, uh, uh, what's the word I want, would uh, dry and evaporate, and we'd bring the shirt out, scratch it, and sure enough, there it was. It would smell like strawberry. Now, the trick was how will this hold up in a washer and a dryer? Mm-hmm. We've done this for about a week, and it got to the point where we could come up, we came up with a formula that a shirt could go through 10, 12, 14 washings, and you could still bring it out, and for a kid, he could still scratch it, and it would smell like strawberry. So <laughs> we knew we had something. Uh, Tropic Magazine uh, put me on the cover of, back then, uh, that was a, a section of the Miami Herald. Yep. You know, and, and Newsweek wrote about a king of the smellies, and, uh, <laughs> and I went all over the I went all over the world. I did shows in Chicago, McCormick Place, in Las Vegas, New York, and uh, and sold the fragrance. Worked with Tropic Pods, who, who at the time was the largest supplier of Disney shirts. Uh, they're no longer in business. That was back many many years ago, and it, it went it went up like a whole hoop and then came down. And uh, but it was. A great marketing experience. But but you are the king of promotion, so what did you do uh, with the NFL Monday Night Football? Well, we had to come up with a name for this great product. <laughs> and so, for some of, some of your viewers, or, or some of your listeners, uh, will recall the great Howard Cosell. Yes. Who, uh, who I still miss. Yes as an announcer for boxing or football or anything else. And, and he used to say to Don Merida and to Frank Gifford, he would say, tell it like it is, Danny. Tell it like it is. And, and, I, and I, I heard that one night, and I said, wait a second. Smell it like it is. <laughs> so that was the name of the company. We incorporated Smell It Like It Is Incorporated. And when they were coming down for a Monday night football game, I found a way get to Howard Cosell. It was out at the Sinesta Beach Hotel. And I went into this this bar where I heard that he always hung out. I yep. was sitting there with, uh, I think his name was Bobby Bethridge. He was the player personnel guy of the Miami Dolphins. And I walked up to him and I said, Mr. Cosell, hi, you know, I'm Jim Gall. My, I'm a young entrepreneur and I've got a company called Smell It Like It Is and I brought you some gift shirts. And and he got off of his stool, and he said to Bobby, just in his inimitable voice, Bobby, do you believe that this young man would find me here at the Sinesta Beach Hotel having a drink? And he went on, what an honor it is, young man, that you would find me and bring this here and name this company. And I said, well... He said, what else can I do for you? I said, well, how about promoting them on Monday Night Football? So this was a Sunday night. Right. Next thing, Alex Harris was on Monday Night Football wearing a Smell It Like It Is t-shirt. Unbelievable. That, that, was, that was a great promotion. That is a great promotion. <laughs> well, uh, again, you're the king of promotion. You and I have done uh, thousands of properties uh, together. I was uh, the auction project manager for a lot of uh, first in the national auction field for government uh, for the FDIC and and uh, was thrilled uh, for our time on that but I'm looking at an article right here um, the Miami Herald it was posted on Sunday June 30th um, just a few days ago and it uh, says auction company thrives through ups and downs of economy uh, but the the most exciting thing, because you you have been, as you said, uh, on front pages and and 
a media darling for for many 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 years but tell me about this new possible um tv show that you will be involved in well i was approached by a young lady about six months ago who said listen um I'm with Peacock Productions, and I would like to like to meet you for lunch. We have some ideas, and I, I initially I thought uh, that it was uh, to sell me an infomercial, which yes. they would produce. I would pay for, yep. and then I would pay to get it on the air. Yep. But I met I met with her in Miami, and a quick meeting turned into a two-hour lunch because she had vetted me. She knew the whole history of Jim Gall Auction Company of America. She knew the ups, she knew the downs, and she said, we feel that we can put together, not a reality show, they like to use the term docu-series. So every time I say reality show, she always says to me, no, no, we're doing a docu-series. Docu-series, okay. Okay. So so I bought into it, and and she and her crew started coming to some of our auctions because they have to put together what they call a sizzle reel where they hit highlights like my my son and I, who's involved in the business, Jonathan. I did not know that interaction interaction between us. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like John, this picture needs to be over there. Well, Dad, you just spent twenty minutes putting it there. I, I don't care. I want it over there. You know, they like that interaction. My daughter, who's going to be eight in September, wow, you know, she's she's been part of the part of the filming. Uh, they love um, the interaction between you know Pat Anderson who's our general manager for 24 years now. And she certainly has lots of ideas and opinions and has been with the ups and downs of the business. So they like that interaction. So they've been at several auctions, and they've, they've committed on the highest level in New York to make this thing work. Of course, what I need to do, of course, is, is, is bring them product, bring, bring them exciting properties that they can come and film and, and watch us sell. So uh, we're all kind of doing our part. It's in the infant stages. It's extremely exciting. And uh, this is a veteran producer who's uh, traveled the world. She's in London as we speak and was in India two weeks ago. And she really believes that we have a, a great story to tell about auction marketing. Well, auction marketing is a great story. And, and again, you've sold, well, you tell me, how many different states and and how many different government entities, and and we've got about uh, five minutes left. Uh, uh, can you give us uh, uh, one of your favorite stories? Well, uh, one of my favorite stories, well, let me first tell you that uh, the number is right about 16,000. Now, okay. some people say to me, how could you have possibly sold 16,000 properties in 34 years? And, of course, the reason, as you know better than anyone, it was because you and I traveled I-10 up and down. That, that, that's the, the interstate that goes, I believe, from Jacksonville all the way to Los Angeles and uh, all points in between. And we would sell hundreds of properties in a week in Louisiana, hundreds in, in Texas, and then be in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. So that's how the number got to be so high, yep. you know, hundreds of properties at a time. And one of my favorite stories is um, three years ago, we got a call into the office, and my gal called me, and she said, Mr. John McAfee has just, just called. And I said, okay. She, you know, she said, it's McAfee as in McAfee antivirus. I said, oh, okay. I see that on the computer every day. Uh, so I called him. He and I got along famously from the start. He said, listen, I'm leaving the U.S. I've got a property, oceanfront property in Molokai, Hawaii. I've got other properties in New Mexico, and I said, well, we can get the job done. Send me some information. I sent them proposals. Suddenly, the New York Times called. They wanted to know someone who had a lot of money who had lost money. I was doing an auction in Missouri on a a marina. So I called this gentleman. I said, how would you like a feature story in the New York Times? Oh, I'd love it. Well, you've got to spill all your dirty laundry out and tell her the whole world her that name she called me back she says jim thank you so much but that's not going to work for me so i gave her another one we were doing actually with steve rybell and ty down in 
mile marker 26 in the Keys, another marina, another guy who had lost a million bucks. Mm -hmm. Give her that name. She calls me back. She says, great guy, good storyteller, uh, but, but no, didn't lose enough money. Now, all this time I know I may have John McAfee in my pocket, but I don't want to blow it right. by, by uh, mentioning his name when I don't have a deal signed with right, him. Right, right. I, I will get back to you. <laughs> so I called John. I said, John, I said, we have an opportunity to get a major story in the New York Times. And this reporter, she's already turned down two people. I know we don't have a deal yet. We haven't met yet. He, I remember his response like it was yesterday. He says, Jim, I guess we're going to be doing business. I said, you got it, John. So I called her back, gave her all of his numbers in Belize, in Colorado, in New Mexico, in Hawaii. And she called me back. She says, I'm going to New Mexico. So uh, the, the, the bottom line is we sold all of his properties. He was the finest man I ever worked for. Wow. He invested 150000 up front in us. Just wired it to us. We never had a listing agreement. He gave me eight powers of attorneys. I sold all the properties without him even being present. And uh, that's, that's a, a super auction success story. That is a great, great story. Jim, uh, tell us how people can reach you for auctions across the country. Okay. It's easy. Uh, first of all, we're at auctioncompanyofamerica.com, auctioncompanyofamerica.com, all spelled out. Our toll-free number, 888-573-1616. My personal email, jgacoa at aol.com. And I never have a problem because I work 24-7, seven days a week. My cell number, 305-775-0731. Have gavel, we'll travel. Have gavel, we'll travel. Jim Gall from Auction Company of America. Jim, thank you so much for calling in. You have a wonderful weekend, and I appreciate your time. God bless you and your family, Doug. You bet. Take care now. Bye-bye. All right. That was Jim Gall. Jim Gall of Auction Company of America, probably the, one of the greatest uh, promoters I've, I've ever met. Uh, his story about the scratch and sniff and and having uh, uh, Howard Cosell uh, get excited about his product and having Alex Karras uh, wear the shirt is is just uh, one of the few amazing stories that uh, I could I could talk to you about. And again, Jim Gall and I uh, worked together for about four years, and uh, I appreciated his time this morning. Uh, we'll be back next week, and thank you.